the most like the most similar incident I can find I can think of in London is the Marchioness disaster. And actually, that pleasure boat sank late at night. It was unknown how many people might have been on it. People joined the party or left the party. It was an ongoing, complex situation. The families there had to wait more than 10 years for a proper inquiry. But I, I looked at the reports in the news on the breakfast television just a few hours later. The police were making estimates based on the number of people believed to be on the boat and the number of people they knew to have survived. This is a methodology that's been proposed for yep. this. And I, and I just... I think, I, I would like to put this question to the mayor actually, um, the police estimate, I understand that there are difficulties, but as the head of the GLA, as many of the GLA group, I am about to ask the mayor a question, many of the GLA group organisations have information related to this, um, would it be possible for you to convene maybe uh, the families, the Red Cross, the police, the fire service? work with the families to agree, a mutually agreed GLA interim estimate, because I think that is possible and I think it would help a lot of people. Well look, Chair, through you, I mean, look, as somebody whose boss was involved in the Marshness uh, River disaster, I'm not sure if that's uh, the best example of best practice. Um, what I will say is this, at the last task force meeting that I attended, the point I made to Martin Hewitt, who's the senior officer working with Stuart Cundy, is uh, residents there just don't believe anything people in positions of power and influence say. I'll be honest, I think they might trust you. Well, if, if, I, if I just if I answer the question, and so, and so the point I made to uh, the police was, look, there are very good reasons why the coroner uh, has a legal requirement to actually be precise with numbers dead and the identity. <laughs> the number currently is 80, those identified around 19. The number of flats there is 129, 23 flats, no surviving member. So using the information from 109 flats, we've got to some figure, 23 flats, nobody at all, which is why I impressed upon the government the needs to reassure those who are worried about immigration status, reassure those who are worried about subletting properties, no action will be taken against them. And so what I said to the police was, look, I understand why the coroner needs to be precise, but can't we, using telephone logs, using DWP information, yeah. using missing persons posters, say, look, uh, these numbers we think are presumed, these, these numbers are those who are missing, presumed dead. Caveat, we've got to wait and see what happens. 15 tonnes of debris on each floor. It's really distressing for those families and bereaved families. And so the police are looking into whether they can provide more information based upon the caveat, which is being a precise uh, uh, figure. And so you know, the police are doing their best. I'll tell you this though, 250 officers working on a daily basis. We provide expertise to Tsunami, to 9-11, and we've got experts from there helping uh, us. I see no evidence of the police trying to hold things back, colluding in a conspiracy, or not wishing to give information. But you're right, these families are distressed, local communities distressed, residents are, are, are really sorrowful, sad, grieving, traumatised and angry. Uh, I'll be back there again uh, tomorrow. I've been there most, uh, most days since the uh, fire, and I'll do what I can. That's the promise I made, even when the cameras leave to be the champion advocate and fight for, that, fight for that community. Okay, thank you. And people do just um, want that. Remember, Barry, you're out of time. I understand that. Okay. Um.